I have made it to Phnom Penh, the capital of Cambodia. I am taking you guys to explore the city, uh, also to learn more about the history. And the first stop is the night market. I'm also reunited with the girls that I've been traveling with uh, at the start of my Cambodia trip. But we split up when I went to the second island and now we are back together. After arriving in Phnom Penh, the first thing on the agenda was visiting the night market. The night market was located right around the corner of our hostel. Aside from clothes and other stuff, the main reason we went there was food. Lots of cheap food. From the traditional skewers with pretty much anything you can think of, to fresh spring rolls, seafood, giant deep fried shrimp, noodles and so much more. I went for the flat noodles with chicken and the girls got a chicken soup. After that we went for some fresh coconut ice cream, a must try in Asia. Good morning, it is 8am and I am waiting for the girls to get in a tuk-tuk to go and visit the Genocide Museum and the Killing Fields. We will start at the museum uh, so that we have all the information we need to process the killing fields as well. Uh, if you didn't know, very recently Cambodia went through a serious genocide uh, and it is part of the country's history and also I find it very important to visit these places um, and for other people to visit these places so that things like this do not happen again in the future because they have happened many times across the globe and even very much more recently than you would expect uh, like Rwanda and Cambodia and even in Peru um, so yeah it's going to be a tough day probably uh, but I will share as much as I can with you guys we set off in a tuk-tuk which cost us $15 for a whole day it's nice if you can split that cost with a few people. The driver will then take you wherever you want to go. The first place we've come to visit is the Twelslang Museum uh, or the S21 prison. That is now um, a remnant and a testimonial of what happened here and of the almost 20,000 people that were killed here at the prison but also on a site just outside of Phnom Penh. The first building that we visit is that one right there and that is all the cells and also the beds are still there and there are pictures of the last victims um, that were killed laying on the beds as well so it is very confronting and then the building behind me which is the second building has all the pictures of the people that were victims to the Khmer Rouge and to Pol Pot's regime um, all of this happened in the 70s so if you think about it uh, people that were my age that were killed back then would now be the age of my parents That is how recent this was. They took pictures of every single victim um, They pretty much like a jail picture because this was used as a prison uh, But also to torture people. It wasn't just the men. It was children and women as well I am now in building C um, and these were also uh, prison cells. The bottom level has cells that were made with bricks um, but you can see that this used to be a gymnasium and it is just rooms that they created these cells in um, and then the second level was all wooden cells and they are so tied together like you can see that only one person would fit into one cell and they would be locked up and then there is a, a bar that also held all the keys. In building D you get to see some of the torture methods and torture devices and in the last room there are uh, the human remains as well of a lot of the victims, a lot of the victims um, that were I guess found in a mass grave and then behind me I'm not going to show them are two men who were some of the boys um, that survived um, and they are selling their book here and I find it very hard to even know how to react to that. Um, but yeah, it's all been very touching. The fact that multiple survivors are like still sitting here trying to tell their story shows you just how recent it has been. 
but yeah obviously it is a good visit to do when you're in Cambodia but it won't be a fun visit that's for sure In 1975, Pol Pot and his Khmer Rouge regime, which was basically a communist um, dictatorship, took control over Phnom Penh and Cambodia. And in the years that followed, between 1.5 and 2 million people were brutally slaughtered uh, when they were seen as a threat to the communist regime. So the first visit was the S21 prison. And now we are at the Chung Ek killing fields and basically the people from the prison and so many others were transported here to be executed and were buried in a ton of mass graves. Um, one even had up to 450 people buried in it. Uh, today it is a place where people come to commemorate the people who have lost their lives but also to learn about this history so that it will not repeat itself. In this monument on site, you can see the human remains that were found in the mass graves. Along with this, another chilling location is the tree where they killed children by hitting their heads against this tree, to then throw them into this mass grave. What happened here in Cambodia and what happened in Europe in the Second World War, etc. It always boils down to the same thing and it's people believing or making people believe that other people are the enemy or that they are going to take things from them and nowadays that is what I feel I see a lot in Europe as well with the immigrant crisis um, and the fact that extreme right is rising so much um, honestly terrifies me and that's all I'm gonna say about it but I feel very strongly about it We then made our way back to the hostel for lunch. We were staying at Wonders Hostel, which had great rooms and bathrooms, as well as a swimming pool and restaurant on the top level looking out over the Mekong River. The food wasn't incredible, but decent, and at night the view was really cool. In the afternoon we are now seeing the main sights of the city, and it is very hard to walk anywhere because the sidewalks are full of scooters, and I feel like we've been walking double kilometers because there are so many obstacles in the way. This thing behind me is the Wat Phnom Dong Pen and this pagoda which you can see right there at the top is a big white pagoda and it is the burial place of the last king of Angkor Wat. We have made it to the central market and this is the most famous market in Phnom Penh and they sell pretty much anything so if you need anything, anything at all, this is where you need to be. at the royal palace and at the moment unfortunately it is closed you cannot visit it it has been ever since covid started um, but we are trying to see if we can catch a glimpse from the outside and it seems like that should be the royal palace yeah no that was the national museum and the gardens of the royal palace so we are just going to continue a bit further and then make our way back to the hostel along the river side and the main river here is the mekong and I have heard so many stories about the Mekong River and its significance in Southeast Asian history. Um, and I was just so excited to finally be seeing the Mekong River. I think a lot of people would be like, huh, what, why? It's just brown and ugly. But to me, 
I don't know, it's something special. of Phnom Penh to go back to Thailand. I left the hostel at about 20 past 6 and I arrived around 7. I took a grab, so it was a tuk-tuk that I ordered through the app um, and it just cost me a few dollars. Then I arrived here and in about 25 minutes I made it to the gate. Um, first of all, I just needed my international passport and an onward ticket from Thailand. Um, which I already have my return flight so that was good enough even though it is um, longer than the 45 days probably um, and then I went through the passport check there was only one person in front of me and same for the other um, yeah the bag check so now I am getting a fancy Starbucks drink because I have so much cash left uh, well it looks like a lot it's probably just a few dollars um, but yeah, I pretty much saved it up for my grab, which I could eventually pay by card. And yeah, also dinner I eventually paid by card. So I think that means I need to buy either a souvenir or lots of snacks. And if you know me by now, it'll probably be lots of snacks. Um, so yeah, I'm flying to Bangkok DMK airport first, and then I have quite a bit of a layover um, before going to Chiang Rai. I'm flying to Chiang Rai because I want to see the two temples um, but I didn't want to go there all the way from Chiang Rai um, so I'm kind of also saving a trip there. Um, time management, it's all about time management because I have so many places to see and so little time. Uh, so yeah, let's see how the journey goes. That is it for the Cambodia videos for now, unfortunately. I have loved every single minute well, I wouldn't say every single minute, but almost every single minute that I've spent here, um, Cambodia has exceeded all my expectations and I hope that it has come across that way. I will still make a video about my general tips of traveling to Cambodia and in Cambodia. And yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. And now I'm going back to Thailand and then probably also Malaysia. So if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't want to miss any of my next videos in Southeast Asia and click on the notification bell to get a notification when I upload. Thank you so much for following me on my adventure and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!